Mullen, and this is a video on how to set up dynamic views. We'll also cover a few of the optional features involved with dynamic views and quickly go over how to use some of these features on the client side with a quick demo of how to use the uh, features <coughs> for the user. First thing we'll need to do, however, is get that dynamic view created. We're going to use our web top to do so. So you want to log in, preferably with the correct information. And you do need to be a doc supervisor, so you have access to the DM admin tab. And then we'll come to validation tables. Select dynamic views. As you can see, there's no dynamic views currently for this library, so we're going to add one. Now the view name is what the users will see. I'm going to call this Open Text TV. You can call it whatever you want. The view ID the users will not see, so that can be something a little more um, short and concise. Select your language. Uh, I am going to choose English, United States, uh, whatever language applies to your environment though, you'll want to use that one, um, if it be French, Canadian, um, English, UK, whatever it happens to be. Whatever form that you're using, in this case we're going to use Law Prof because this is a standard client matter library. And there are four optional nodes. The top node is just that. The top node, all other three nodes would sit underneath that. You can choose to display it or you can just have the other nodes appear directly. The top node will show the name of the dynamic view that you chose up here under the view name. The all node will show all clients and then all matters underneath that inside of the library. So uh, you will, like I said, just display every single thing in there. The, my subscrip or the subscriptions node will show the clients and matters that are specifically subscribed to by a user. So if a user does not go in and say, I want to subscribe to this client or I want to subscribe to this matter, nothing will show up under that subscription node. And of course, nothing will show up under there that they don't choose to see. And the reset node will show clients and matters that the user has within a certain period, set in set number of days, um, save something to or access. And you can see that number of days can be set right there. So I will briefly go through here and select all of these again these are all optional um, you don't have to have any one obviously you have to have one but you can choose just recent you can choose just subscriptions or you can show all four it's it's whatever you feel comfortable with in your environment the top node icon is called just that top node icon our top underscore node underscore icon the all node name, this is what will be displayed to the user for the all node. So I'm going to call it all clients. And this is just the icon that gets used. If you mistype in an icon name, it'll automatically go to the default icon. So it's not going to like crash your dynamic view if you type in the wrong icon name. You just may not see the icon you expect. And of course, if you don't see the icon you expect, you probably mistype something in here. The subscriptions node we'll call my clients because it's just going to be my clients that I choose to see. And that is the subscript node icon, I think. Again, if it doesn't show up right, we'll look at it later on and tell. And the recent node we'll just call recent clients because it's going to be clients that I have recently saved to or touched or accessed. Let's go 30 days. And that icon is called recent underscore node underscore icon. Now we are going to set security for this dynamic view. What this does is controls who can see the dynamic view and what kind of access and what they can do with the dynamic view. Since I created it, I have rights to everything by default. I can see it. I can edit it. I can see the subscribe node. I can see the recent node. I can see the all node. I can subscribe to a view if I want to. And I can set security. We'll get into that in a little bit but uh, it allows me to set what we call matter-centric security if you choose to enable that feature. And it also allows me to create ad hoc folders at the levels where that's been um, also signed, and we'll get into that in just a moment. Now, as you can see, docs users are added by default, and by default, docs users can see it. They can see all four of the nodes that they might need to see. However, they're not able to edit it, they're not able to set security, and they're not able to create ad hoc folders. If you'd like to give your users these permissions, you can do so here. If you have other groups or individual users, you can come in here and add them. Um, I don't have any set up for this library, unfortunately, but you could come in here and tell, you know, okay, user X can see the dynamic view and she can cr create 
ad hoc folders, but we don't want that user creating security. Mm -hmm. This is where you can come in and set those things. But we're going to leave this as it is and hit save. So now we've got all of this filled out. We've got our security set. We are going to come up here and we are going to hit save. And you might think we were done because it brings us back here. It shows a dynamic view and, um, you know, I. Uh, quite often people think that that's it. Unfortunately, it's not quite it. We've created the dynamic view, but we haven't created the levels yet, um, or, or basically the, the meat of the dynamic view. We've created like the top portion, but not the, the guts. So we need to come back in here, and we'll click on this view levels. And currently there's no level set, so we're gonna come in here and click add. Now, as I mentioned, this is going to be kind of a standard legal library where it's client and matter. So our level is going to top level is going to be client. We'll have a second tier level called matter, and then our bottom level, which is the enumeration, will be the doc type. But first things first, we need to create the client level. I'm going to create call this clients. Easy enough. And this should be client underscore icon. It is going to be a level, so we'll leave it set at level. And this is the column on the form that we want to associate it with. As you can see, these are all the different columns on the law prof form, or not all of, but the relevant ones. And I'm going to choose client because that's what I'd like to associate this level with. Now here are the level options. The first one is show level data before searches in ad hoc folders. So when, if you're not familiar with dynamic views, this may be hard to visualize, but your dynamic view is going to be kind of a tree structure, and this will just control whether or not the assigned searches that you have show up before any folders or other data. This will make more sense, I think, if you um, have not seen a dynamic view after you see one. It's just a matter of how things are displayed. The second option here, show grouping level. If you want, you can group um, things together. So when you, for instance, have all clients, rather when you expand that, rather than listing every single client out, you can group by the first character or the first two characters. So it'll have A through Z, and then you'd have to expand A to see all of your clients that start with A. This can be very handy in environments where there's you know hundreds, maybe thousands of clients or matters, and you don't want to have to wait for them to get displayed every time a user expands a node. This way, it can uh, break that up, make it a little easier for you. The next option is users can drag documents onto this level. Inside dynamic views, a user can take like a document on his desktop and drag it to a dynamic view node, and it'll automatically save it into DM with the metadata information on that node. Um, alternatively, if you're in a quick save screen, if you're in Word and you go to save things, off to the left, you'll see your dynamic view node. You can just click on a particular node and it'll automatically fill that information in on your profile form. So that can be a way to save time. This allows users to create ad hoc folders at this level. Again, those users have to have permission to create ad hoc folders. And then at the level, you also have to allow this level to have ad hoc folders. The next uh, option is hide the new document menu option for this level. One of the options, and uh, again, if you're not familiar, this may not be too uh, obvious, but you can right click on a dynamic view node and choose new document and that's another way to save a document into DM using dynamic views. If you don't want your users to be able to do that, you can hide this option. Uh, same thing, very similar to new document, new email. Um, you can hide that if you don't want your users to be able to create new documents or emails that way. Supports disabled. If this is checked, what that means is that any disabled um, clients will still be displayed in the dynamic view. So if you want go through and you've disabled a bunch of clients, but you think people may still want to search for those clients one day, even though they're not currently active, you may still need to search for a document saved under that client name um, previous. You can check that, and then people will still be able to see that client. If that's unchecked and you disable a client, they will not be able to see that client in the dynamic view. Support security means that you can set security at this level. For instance, this is the client level, so you can use a, uh, a type of uh, security where any document saved to this client will have that security that you've assigned to the client. Um, we're not going to do that on the client level. We'll show you that on the matter level, which we'll get to in just a moment. But at the client level, I want users to be able to drag documents here. I'll allow them to create folders. Uh, going to give them the option to do that if they want. We're going to support disabled, and I don't think we need to use any of these other ones. I don't have enough um, clients in my uh, test library to justify grouping, and I don't really care about um, what order the uh, items appear on my dynamic view. 
So now that we've created the client and chosen the options, we click Save. And you'll see the Matter ID is automatically created. And that's because client and matter are a parent-child relationship inside of the database. So the system knows if you want to see client, which is the top end, you're going to see matter, which is the second end. We can come in here and take a look at it. And the only thing that we may want to update is this default level icon. We can come in here and we can update this. I believe there's a matter icon. Maybe not. I stand corrected. But as you can see, this is all selected. And the same options that we chose at the client level are replicated here. Now, in this case, I also want to allow for security at the matter level. So I'm going to come in here and choose that. And I'm going to hit save. And in fact, I skipped a step. I'm also going to come in here. Well, we'll come back to this, actually. The final level we want to add is our enumeration, which is doc type. So we'll come in here. And we'll even document type just to be extra thorough. And it is going to be an enumeration. This is not a level. This will be an enumeration. The column is going to be type ID. And as you can see here, document type. And I don't want users to be able to drag documents, or I do want users to be able to drag documents to this level. I do want them to be able um, to uh, create ad hoc folders, but that's it. Like you can't set security on an enumeration level, so that option is grayed out. Okay, so now we can hit save. So now we've created our three levels. Um, if we were to go into our dynamic view, you would see the client um, matter and type IDs. However, we've not assigned any searches for these yet. So what we need to do is come into each level and assign the relevant searches. And you do that by coming into the client level and you can see level search items. Click that. These are the pre-made searches. Um, you can create your own over here on the level searches tab. We aren't going to get into that in this video just to keep things a little simple. But I'm going to choose all documents and emails, my documents, and my emails as the three searches. You can add whichever ones are relevant to you or that you think are best. And I'm going to do the same here with Matter. And just for the sake of demonstration to mix it up, I'm going to add some different ones for the type ID. I don't know why in reality anybody would want to do this, but I'm just going to do it for the sake of showing you guys how you can add different searches at different levels if you choose. So now we've created our three levels, our client, matter, and our document type. We've assigned searches to all three of those levels. We've given them permissions. We've come in here uh, to security, so given uh, permissions to see who can see the security levels. We are going to save this again. And now we are going to come over to our client. This is the same client machine I was using uh, for an email filing demonstration. So it's called the uh, EF client. But it will work for our purposes for dynamic views. Now I will need to refresh the cache um, on the client machine since I created that new view. I will do that manually. I could go through the program and do it. But I like to be extra thorough and come in here to the roaming folder, find the cache folder, and just delete it out that way. Now, log into DM extensions, and you'll see here's our dynamic view, OpenText DV. And you can see I've got my clients, recent clients, and all clients. All clients are going to show me all four of my clients. I created some dummy names, Amy, Matt, Rob, Sarah. There's the default client that still exists that I never bothered to delete. And because I'm so clever, I name things like matters Amy Matter 1 and Amy Matter 2. And the Matt, for instance, M1, Matt M2. Again, oh so clever of me. And I really like to move this out here. Come on, Windows, don't fight me. Okay, and as you can see, so client named Amy, Amy Matter 1, 
So this is the client level, and as you can see, I added these three searches. So I can search for all documents and emails for Amy. I can search for my documents for Amy, and I can search for my emails for Amy. Amy does not appear to have any documents. Um, okay. Let's search for somebody else who might have some documents. Recent, here we go. Perfect example. These are the three people I have recently saved documents to. And as you can see, I've saved documents to Matter 1 and Matter 2 for Sarah, so they're both listed. If I was to go look here at Matt, I've only saved stuff to Matter 2 for Matt, so Matter 1 is not going to be listed because I haven't saved anything recently. So again, I'll come up here, and you'll see, yep, just the one document, and it was saved to Matter 2. So because I did this at the client level, it's going to show me all of the returned results. So let's come back here to Sarah. Sarah has a bunch of documents saved, it appears. Some to matter one, some to matter two. But since I did the search up at the client level, it's showing me all of them regardless of the matter. I can come here to matter one, go all documents and emails, and see that I've only saved one item to matter one. And it happens to be type ID one. So I could even come down here to the doc type level and do my search here. And you'll notice there's two different searches here because of what I added. Um, and again, my documents and emails will still bring that up. Um, but if I was to come in here to doc type three, and do a search, nothing, because nothing was saved for that. So that is just kind of a quick version of how to set up dynamic views and how to use the, uh, navigate through there and do the searches. Um, again, the recent is going to automatically show you just the ones that have been recently used. All will show you all. My clients is the one that I set up as a subscription, so let's just talk about that briefly. If I come in and right click on any of these dynamic view nodes, there's going to be an option here called subscriptions. Oops. Oh, okay, there we go. Inside the subscriptions node, it will show me all of my current subscriptions. I currently don't have any, so I'm going to right click on here again, and I'm going to subscribe to a particular matter. I'm going to subscribe to Sarah Matter 2. Click OK, and now you'll see because I subscribe to a matter, I have to subscribe to the client because you can't see a matter unless you obviously the client is above it. But it's only showing me Sarah Matter 2 because that's the only matter I subscribe to. Now were I to come in here and subscribe at a client level, and let's just say I choose Matt, now when I look at my subscriptions, I'll see Matt, I see both my matters, whereas with Sarah I only see Matter 2 because I subscribe to Matt at the client level and I subscribe to Sarah Matter 2. So it's only showing me these matters. And you can see where you subscribed at with that little X there shows you what level you subscribe to. So now that I subscribe to some things, if I go into my clients, you'll now see Matt and Sarah, and I can expand here, and I'll see my searches for Matt, and I'll see the matters that I have subscribed to, and with Sarah, I will only see Matter 2 because that's all I subscribe to, and I'll see all the different doc types down here so I can do my searches or look for them that way. That is the one way to um, subscribe to a client or a matter. If you would prefer, you can always pull up like the all clients, right click on somebody let's say I wanted to subscribe to the default client I can right click on it and go to subscribe and now default shows up under my subscriptions if you want to unsubscribe you right click on it and go unsubscribe okay or you can come back into the subscriptions Oop. you can come back into the subscriptions box and unsubscribe from here, whichever way is easier for you. So that is how subscriptions work. Now I mentioned that I checked that box for a matter called support security. What that allows you to do is come in, let's take a look here, let's say for Amy matter 2, I want to right click on that, I need to expand it, sorry, and I can set security. So this means any document I save to client Amy matter amy matter 2 will automatically receive this security so i want to set it up so obviously i'm going to have rights to it since i'm setting up the security to it and i want to set it up so only doc supervisors can see things um, and i'm going to come in here add doc supervisors and give them full rights so now myself who happens to be in the doc supervisors group anyway can see it anybody else in the doc supervisors group can see that document now if we come in here and do a search. Okay, there's currently nothing saved to that matter. So I'll open up Microsoft Word. 
put some random characters in there. Go to save it. Now two things I'm going to show you. One, you'll see the dynamic view shows up here on the quick save. I can come in here and I can use the dynamic view and fill in the metadata this way. Click right there, put in Amy, Matter 2, Content Type 3, because that's what I clicked on. And it said Type 3 under Matter 2 for Amy, Amy Matter 2 under the client Amy. And I do need to put in my user ID. Normally I have that as a default. All right. Click OK. Now let's come in here. All documents and emails. Now we see that's there. And it's still open. So let And if we scroll down here on the profile form, you notice that this is actually grayed out. But if we come in here, actually, to look at the profile, I don't know why that didn't work. Oh, yeah, it's just not going to show, but it, it, it will uh, set the security. It, it, it does it a little differently on the background tables. Um, so that is, uh, in short, how to use um, dynamic views. Uh, again, not, not all of the features, but I believe I covered most of them. Let's double check here. Was there anything in the web top options that are on the view levels that I did not cover? Oh, okay. You know what? Just to show you how these, um, how this works here, let me do that real quick. I'm doing this at what the matter level. Okay. And I'm going to come in here. Make sure the end is out of memory. Working on a laptop here, a little uh, clunky with the mouse that I'm used to, sorry. And if we come in here, by the way, just to show you. But the person or group, as you can see, that that was the person or group, and here are the access rights we gave it. So the security table was updated. It's not going to show it on the document itself, but the security was set um, on the back end um, for matter two. Now that we've come in here, I'm going to go to my clients. So at the client level, you see how we have the searches, and then we have matter one and matter two. And well, we have the same here because I don't have any ad hoc folders. But if I had any ad hoc folders, um, they would have been posted um, in a separate order. In fact, let's go through. In fact, I should show you that. Add new. So again, you can add new documents. That option can be hidden. Um, you can import files this way. If you've got like an item on your desktop, you can um, kind of import it in that way, import a paper document, or create a folder. Well, we'll do folder first. And this is an ad hoc folder, so we'll call it Matt M1 folder. The content type, we're going to go with folder. And we'll set myself as the author of this. And now you can see the ad hoc folder appears up here. The other options for add, just to show those off very quickly. Add a document. I don't have any 
anything set here. I apologize. You can set this in library maintenance. I could come in here. Microsoft Word would be listed. I'd select it. It would launch Microsoft Word and would automatically save a document in that way. Um, I just don't have that configured. It's not that big a deal. Um, importing files. Pick a file. I'm going to import a picture of, you know what, the desert. Type 3. Oh, we do have to pick an application. It didn't put that in automatically, huh? Oh, I don't have one set up for it, a good one set up for images, so we'll just go with docs image just to save it in. The point I was really wanting to show is now that it's been saved into DM, and you can see there we go under Mac too. So that's the end of the video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact support and let us know. Thank you.